The topic of this video is determining the domain and range of a graph. Let's look at an example. All right, so we have a graph here. This graph has a curvy piece over to the left and a curvy piece over to the right. And there's sort of a gap in the middle. They're not touching one another. And our job is to find the domain and the range of this graph. Now, the first thing that I'd like to point out is this graph does not represent the graph of a function. It fails the vertical line test. So we cannot call this a function, but we can call it a relation. So we're going to try and find the domain and range of this relation. Let's remind ourselves of a couple of definitions first. Domain. Domain is the collection of all of the real number inputs that give us real number outputs. The most important word there is inputs. Domain is a collection of the inputs, which for an ordered pair would be the x-coordinate, which means for a graph, it would be a collection of all of the x-coordinates of all of the points on the graph. So how many points are on this graph? Well, there are an infinite number of points on this graph. So what we're going to do to motivate understanding of this lesson is we're just going to pick some of them and we're going to graph or shade their x coordinates on an x number line. This is a teaching tool. It's not the method that I want you to use to solve this problem when you do it in your homework or on a test. This is just to teach the idea of the problem. Let's begin. Okay, so let's start with this point right here. This is a point that is on our graph. Therefore, its x-coordinate belongs in the domain. What is the x-coordinate of this point? Well, we have to look carefully at the scale of the drawing. If this is negative 6, then that must mean that this is negative 4, this is negative 2, and therefore this point must have an x-coordinate of negative 3. So we're going to put a little shaded dot here on our x number line right at negative 3 because we have a point from our graph with an x of negative 3. Okay, let's pick another point like this one right here. All right, what's the x-coordinate of that point? Well, if you trace it down, you find that the x-coordinate of that point is negative 4. So we're going to put a dot at negative 4 on our graph. And let's do another one. Let's do this dot right here, which we can see is at negative 5. And this dot right here, which we can see is at negative 6. And, perhaps most importantly, this arrow. What does that arrow mean? Well, that arrow means that this graph continues forever to the left. So you're going to have a negative 3, and a negative 4, and a negative 5, and a negative 6, and a negative 7, and a negative 8, and a negative 9, and a negative 10, and so on and so on and so on, towards infinity. Now, there's one more concept that I want to make sure that everyone understands. This point here and this point here are connected by a smooth curve, which means there are an infinite number of points in between this one and this one. And if you think about what the x-coordinates of those points might be, that's where we start to get into the decimal number system. So when you leave negative 3 traveling to the left, you're going to go through negative 3.1 and negative 3.2 and negative 3.21, and negative 3.22, and negative 3.33. The point I'm making is there are an infinite number of points between negative 3 and negative 4. And so when we draw all of those infinite number of points, it forms a shaded region. We no longer have just a single value at negative 3 and a single value at negative 4. We have all of the values in between. And in fact, this idea should be applied to all of the points. Between here and here, there are an infinite number. Between here and here, there are an infinite number. Between here and there, there are an infinite number. And what we find is that we end up shading the entire number line that is in between all of these dots. So the part of the graph that we've looked at so far contains x coordinates that go from negative 3 to the left forever. We could write that as an interval. That would be from negative infinity all the way to negative 3. And we would separate those by a comma. And then we'd put some symbols next to those to indicate whether or not we're going to include or exclude the endpoint values. Well, infinity always gets a parenthesis symbol. But do we include or exclude the negative 3? Let's be thoughtful. Do we have a point on our graph with an x-coordinate of negative 3? The answer is yes. 
It's right here, negative 3 comma 0. And if domain is the collection of all of the points of the graph, all of the x coordinates, well then certainly I have to include negative 3 in my domain. And what's the symbol to include? A bracket. So this part of our graph, the left side of our graph, tells us that our domain is from negative infinity to negative 3. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, you only did the top. What about the bottom? Well, here's what's interesting about that. Part of the definition of domain is that if a number shows up more than once, we only keep one copy of that number. So this point right here, which has an x value of negative 4, would be graphed on our number line. But you can see we already have that shaded. The number negative 4 is already in this interval. And in fact, if we tried to include any of these points down here, we would find that every single one of them is duplicating values of x that we have already included in our collection of numbers. We get no new information. Okay, now, like I said, this was a teaching tool. This is the long way. It's not the way I expect you to solve this problem when you are actually doing it in your homework. So what is the method that I want you to use? Well, it's my hope that now that you understand the details, I can give you sort of a shortcut way of solving these problems. Let's turn our attention now to the second wing of this graph. If you're looking for domain, you're looking for x. x measures how far a graph goes left or right. So if you want to know the domain, what you really are asking yourself is, how far does this graph go to the left? How far does this graph go to the right? And are there any gaps in between? So turning our attention to the right wing of this graph, which point on this graph is farthest to the left? Which point on the black curve is closest to the silver edge of my board? Well, that would be this one. And which part of it is closest to the right, closest to the right edge of my board? That would be this one. Or this one, they're tied. They're both equally to the right. Can you trace a path from the leftmost point to the rightmost point by moving along your curve without picking up your marker? The answer is yes. Therefore, we have all of the x values from this one, which is 3, to this one, which is forever to the right, which is infinity. So we write our domain as bracket 3, comma, infinity, parenthesis. Okay, so with that, we can now turn our attention to the bottom half and find that this is exactly like it was before. By including these pieces of the graph, we're going from an x of 3 all the way to an x of infinity. We're not getting any new numbers here. They're numbers that are already shaded on our number line. So we're now ready to write our final domain as an interval by uniting these two intervals together. So the domain of this graph is negative infinity comma negative 3, union, bracket 3, comma, infinity.